All right, so this morning we're going to talk about kind of really, I'm going to start with the five most common questions we get in listings. Uh, the ones that can make you uncomfortable if you don't have an answer for them or you might dread and sometimes you worry about getting those, those questions, having an answer for those. And what I really want to do is, is as, as we talked about before we got started, is, is there's really not a set answer for every single person. Different personalities will get different answers. You know, you're going to adapt to what you're in front of, uh, but the questions are typically pretty, pretty much the same. And they may come in different ways. So like the first one I want to talk about, this is the most common one we get, you know, is will you reduce your commission? Um, this is human nature for somebody. Listen, I do that. You know what I mean? I mean, we all do that, right? You almost feel like you have to. And so you'll notice different people handle this different ways. If I'm sitting there and we're getting towards the time to sign the paperwork and they start getting nervous and kind of squirming, I can almost count it down 10, 9, 8. They don't want to, but they know their friends have told them they have to ask if they can reduce the commission. Five, four. You know what I mean? You can almost <laughs> see it coming, right? And so when you see that, if they're nervous, there is a way because listen, they really probably in a lot of cases, they understand if you've done the job correctly, which we'll do in a couple weeks, we'll walk through how you show them the value because the commission negotiation should not come up until you've shown them the value, until you've had them showing them the value of us as a company, you as an individual, everything that they're going to get, the value in that. Um, but if you see them getting nervous, really the best question, the, the way that I typically will answer that if I can see that someone's in that position, they're probably just asking because they feel like they have to. Or most times I do this anyway, is they just say, will you reduce your commission? And I just say, nope. <laughs> and I sit there and it can be uncomfortable, but I don't want to say the next thing. I just sit there. And there have been times it'll be 15 seconds and my heart just, I'm like, they can see my heart. You know what I mean? Because you, you know, you're, it's like uncomfortable. But in reality, when you say that, they're going to they're gonna respond one of two ways. Okay, I mean, you know, I have to ask fine mm -hmm. and then you start signing paperwork right mm -hmm. or they may say well um, in reality um, I think I need that to do that that's when I shift a little bit okay and this is what I do and this is I'm gonna do the second question too because sometimes we'll say well I met with so-and-so agent and they told me they would do their do the commission at a reduced rate so whether they say they they push back on me saying no or they come initially at me and they say so-and-so told me they would do that what I will typically do is, first off, I want to understand and let them know that I hear what they're saying and I understand what the question is, okay? So I'm going to kind of almost repeat that back to them. So I'm going to say something along the lines of, I completely understand that you want to get the best value you can. Let me ask you a quick question, though. The bottom line of what you take home, is that more important than what the commission is? And typically, they're going to say yes. And I say, let me just put it to you this way. You're, you're hiring someone to negotiate one of your biggest assets. Just for me personally, I usually try to tell stories. I say, just for me personally, I've got to feed my family. I have two kids in college. And in reality, if I'm willing to take food off my kid's table and my family's table and not negotiate in a way that works for me with you, how do you think it's, I'm going to react when somebody brings an offer for your biggest asset? Do you think I'm going to fight for you if I don't even fight for myself? Mm -hmm. Or do you think that it's going to be a situation where I'm just going to do everything I can to get you to accept the offer? Ultimately, the bottom line is the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Who do you believe is going to negotiate the hardest for you? Who do you believe is going to give you not only the most value, but is going to get you the highest price ultimately in your pocket? Usually that takes care of it, y'all. I mean, in reality, if you, if you come back with a personal story and you tie that in, and you come back and you show them the value, I mean, for me, I want somebody that's going to fight for themselves. They're not even going to fight for themselves. Yeah. I mean, how are they going to fight for me, you know? So understand those things. Typically, I'll do it another way, too, if they continue to push back. I will typically say, especially if I'm basing it off of a 6% commission, and you know, we've got different regions in our area with different prices. We've got some that are even more than that in certain lower prices. We've got some that are, high, you know, that are that are higher. It just depends. But typically, whatever I'm working from, I will say, after I've shown them everything we're going to do, I will lay it out a couple of different ways. I will say that's fine. You know, in our situation, I typically do 50% with with buyers agents and, and, and sellers agents. I just I I want it to be a, a win win for everybody. I want to have the percentage high enough that someone wants to sell your place above others, yeah. or at least be competitive. <clears throat> our part is three percent. How much do you want me to pay them then? Yeah. And then I put it back in them, and then I say, well, based on that, you know, if we offer two, and there's a house three doors down that somebody's paying three percent to them. It's just human nature 
that that buyer's agent is probably going to show that house before yours. So ultimately, when we start thinking about this, how are we going to sell your house faster and for the most money? Because listen, time is money. Every day that goes by, there's a mortgage payment, there's electric bills, there's, there's taxes, there's insurance. All these things continue to go up. So it's not just about how, what price we sell it for, it's how quickly can we sell it to make sure that we maximize this. Mm -hmm. So when you start getting into those positions, does that make sense to y'all? Mm -hmm. um, what have y'all done? Any, anybody done anything different when somebody asked them? I've been in situations before where they've asked for me to lower the commission and I just plainly spell it out for them how much it takes mm -hmm. to do a listing yeah. correctly, how much yeah. it costs. Mm -hmm. And that's a big part of it. The, the other thing too is, is I, you gotta be willing to walk away. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, at some point, you gotta be like, I'm not gonna do that, you know? I'm not gonna do that. That's just, I mean, you know, I w and, and so, you know, that's another place to come from is when you get to a point where you're like, you know, I could really, I, I want this business, but ultimately, I'm not gonna prostitute myself out at a lower price than what I'm worth. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go find somebody that sees my value um, and I'm gonna work with that person. I mean that in a negative way. I'm not going to necessarily say that to somebody, but you know what I mean. I mean, you've got to come to a place where you know your own value. Mm -hmm. And if you don't feel you've got you know, your own value and you're going into a listing that's at a higher level, we've done this with a lot of agents that maybe are new or that are in that place, find a team that does a ton of listings. I guarantee if you go to them and you say, listen, I'm, I'm kind of new to this listing thing, I would love to co-list this with you. Can you come with me and list this place and we'll co-do it and I can see your process? Mm -hmm. Most will be glad to do that. Okay? Sure. <laughs> so with that that situation, be glad to go in there. Well, it's, and it's a mutual benefit. Yeah. I mean, you know, you get to see the systems. Mm -hmm. You know, they get to see what goes on. Mm -hmm. And so from that standpoint, I think, you know, don't be afraid to, to, to for the, of the tough questions. Practice those things. You know, role play. I mean, if any of y'all want to do that, I mean, I can help you with that in those situations because after you've said it a few times, it just kind of rolls off pretty easy, you know? And I'll kind of even laugh it off sometimes. You know, so, wait, will we reduce your commission? No. I mean, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then I just kind of just pause and I just stare at them. I think a lot of people think too, they calculate 3% in their mind and think you're going to make mm -hmm. all this money, right? Exactly <coughs> yes. my point. But the reality yeah. is if you really go, listen, we're talking, you know, even a lot of times it's not 6%, it's 5%. We're mm -hmm. talking 2.5% and, and then I have furniture halfway fees and I make a split off of this. And so reality is I'm not making the money mm -hmm. you think I'm making. So yeah. you calculate, I mean, I before, I've calculated them, it out. You know, how much am I spend? That's the other thing is, is show them what you're going to spend. I mean, you know, when you're talking about a higher end listing, it's not even taking your time in, just the hard dollars out. And what I've said to people before is, is you have to understand the only person that's really taking a financial risk right now on me listing this is going to be me because I, I, don't I don't get my expenses back unless I sell this for you. Um, so I'll lay that out for them, and some sometimes and show them exactly what those what those costs are. Um, really, you got to you got to figure the person out, and you got to figure your own personality out. You know, I mean, it, it just depends on you. You can't take the way exactly that I say it to someone, and maybe make it in your voice, and then maybe it works better for you. But just to have that answer already, you know, basically, I just try to have two or three different arrows in my quiver, and I react to the people. You know, what's their personality? What is it that I feel like is going to, they're going to understand? I mean, if I'm sitting there with somebody that has two kids in college, I'm going to talk about me having two kids in college because they understand mm -hmm. how much that costs. You know what I mean? If I'm sitting there with someone and they've got someone that's you know that is that is in a in a tough situation, I may go back to a time in my life when I was in one of those situations. And we're always trying to connect with people in a way. We're not trying to do this in a way that twists anything. But if you understand your value, it's the ability to communicate your value and the, and the willingness to walk away. Um, but there's no doubt, we're probably, you're going to get that question. If you do this business, you're going to get that question. The more times you get that question, the more business you're going to do. Because every time you get it, you're going to get a little bit better at it. That's why I would say instead of practicing in these listing appointments, find me or somebody in your office or somebody that's a friend of yours and y'all just role play it and just, say, just go through these questions. You know what I mean? You know, will you reduce your commission? And then just... Play it out. Get uncomfortable, you know, because you're growing when you're uncomfortable, you know. And then, you know, if they say, you know, another agent told me they would do it for less, how are you going to answer that? I completely understand you want to get the best value. Um, but let me ask you a question. Is it about the bottom line or is it about how much you pay in commission? And then I go into, you know, the negotiation of, you know, if they won't negotiate for themselves, 
I'd be nervous that they're going to negotiate from even one of my biggest assets. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you can answer those questions in a way that kind of goes through that. Um, another big one we get is, I have a friend or relative in the business. <laughs> you ever heard that? We all Everybody? Yes. I tell you, first thing I always do is I laugh and I say, I say, boy, if you don't have a friend, if you live in this area and you don't have a friend in real estate, you don't have any friends. I mean, you know, there's, <laughs> there's so many realtors around here, you know, from that standpoint. Personally, what I do is I tell a story um, and I try to do this because I'm trying to connect. Listen, I mean, the best way you can make connection is by sharing the stories, okay? And so what I'll do is I will tell them the story and it's a real story. And if you don't have your own story, Use mine or use somebody else's. But for me, my best friend that I grew up with since I was, a, he was at my one year birthday party. Um, we, um, we listed their house and it was nothing that I could do. It was an appraisal issue. It was nothing I could do. But there's that friction to this day because of how that thing went down. Mm -hmm. I could not have controlled that at all. And so what I'll do when I'm sitting with people is I'll say, I completely understand. If anybody values relationships, I do. So I completely understand where you're at. Let me tell you what happened to me and, and tell you what I do now. Mm -hmm. And what, depending on who they are, um, I'll ask them. I'll just, say, I'll just say, that's great. I mean, listen, there's, there's some great agents down here. Who is your cousin or friend or whoever it is? And typically, if it's a really good agent, a lot of times I'll say, I completely understand. They do a great job. Yeah. Or I will say, who? hmm. I really I don't I don't recognize that name, um, but I'm sure they're I'm sure they're good. You know I'm not going to down somebody, mm -hmm. but I'm going to say those things, and then I'm going to tell them my story of how this how it just made a disruption. And if I see that they're really set on that, a lot of times because I'll offer I'll say, well, listen, here's what I personally do, is I will find someone, typically in my office, that I will refer my friends to. And I'll get a referral fee so that I at least participate in the transaction so that I get something out of it mm -hmm. uh, because they want to help me. You're, you, know, you, you know, your friends, you want to help your friend. Mm -hmm. So here's a way that you can preserve the relationship and they can get a portion of the sale. Mm -hmm. I'll be glad to do that for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I do that. I offset that, you know, in that way. If it's somebody that I can tell that relationship is deep. If it's just a long lost relative or something, typically when I ask them and they tell me and I don't know who the name is, I'll say I, hey, I get it. I completely understand. I mean, you know, this is, I value relationships as much as anybody. But, you know, this is one of your biggest assets. Is this who you want? And if you say yes, I completely get it. Is this who you want to negotiate the biggest asset that you have to make sure that you get the best value? And if they say yes, typically I'm like, I get it. I'll tell you what. If they aren't able to perform, know that I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to fight somebody and try to convince them not to list with their brother. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, in reality, let's be real. But what I want to do is I want to show them some options. I want to give them a way that's in between. I'm not going to be dead set. I mean, unless I just see that's the option. But I typically, a lot of times, what I will do if I see that that's a relationship that is very tight is I will say, I will tell them my story, and then I'll offer to pay a referral. And then I'll say, does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. And they'll say yes, no, or I need to think about it, whatever the case is. But in reality, you need to give them some room to make a decision. I'm not going to try to back them into a corner. Yeah. That doesn't do any good. I mean, that's the old school selling, and to be perfectly frank, listen, it will work. I just don't want to be greasy like that, personally. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I don't want somebody to walk away and be like, the guy was right, but I don't know if I trust him. Mm -hmm. I want them to feel like, yeah, that guy gets it. You know, and in reality, as we all know, especially we're in the relationship business. It's not just about the one transaction. We're playing the long game. We're trying to find those relationships that we can build over time. So, if you get that question, I have I have a friend, in the, you know, I'll ask them who it is first, and then if it's a great agent, I'll say they're a great agent. You know, um, you know, let me show you kind of what we can do, and then ultimately you've got to make a decision on what's best for you. Uh, let me tell you the relate. Let me tell you what happened to me, and then I tell that story. Or you could say, "Let me tell you what happened to a guy in our office," you know, or whatever it is. But just give them an option. Give them some options there. Continue to show your value. And a lot of times, I've had people that I've walked away and I've been like, "I get it. They got a good friend." But when I left, they're like, "You know what? Because you didn't pressure me, um, I just, you know, that made sense to me, and I really don't want to hurt that relationship. I would rather hurt them." you know, a little bit on the front than damage our relationship forever. And so I've gotten listings that way as well when I really didn't think it was any way. But just by you being genuine and being authentic, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you'll get those relationships, okay? Mm -hmm. any, any of y'all handle it any other way? Have y'all had that one? Yeah. 
It is. It, it's it's it common. It comes up for me more so <clears throat> not a friend or a relative, but just another agent in general, right? Mm -hmm. That you know, they walk in an open house and they say, you know, they start talking, talking, talking. I start showing them, start sending them information. Mm -hmm. They say, well, you know, so and so sold us our house, but I'd heard from her in right. a year. How does that work? Or mm -hmm. it depends on you know the person if it's in this office or whatever and a lot of times you just pick up the phone and call them and right. say you know all right tell me about this what are you yeah. gonna do or are you yeah absolutely uh, yeah I mean I, I think a lot of times you know when those when those things happen that's one of, one of the first questions you should be qualifying at an open house is are you working with another agent oh, yeah. you know, that's one of the first questions um, that I try to ask right yeah. um, because if they are first off I want every agent in our market to know that I'm not going to try to weasel something out. You know what I mean? I've had clients, I've had other agents that I have called and said, hey, your client stopped by this open house, and the goodwill you get from that is mm -hmm. through the roof. Mm -hmm. Now, if they say, well, I've got this agent that sends me these emails and this stuff, and say, great, I mean, is that somebody that you plan to work with? You know, if they say, well, not really, then I say, okay, great. Let me just, if you don't mind, I'd like to start providing you some value. See if it's a good fit. In reality, you got to ultimately make the decision. You know, there's no obligation for you to work with whoever you decide. So, um, just let me know if there's somebody in particular. I just love to add some value. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? And then typically they'll do that. Did you say you called um, when you've talked to someone that had a house and they yeah. worked someone like a year ago? You called their old agent. It depends on the relationship and if they're in this office and what they say when you ask them yeah. those questions. And if you know them. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of times they, 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 you can kind of tell the vibe. You know what I mean? You can tell if it's somebody just trying to, you know, well, I know we have we had an agent that sends us some stuff. Or somebody that says, oh, we worked with Tommy and Tommy was great. You know, we love Tommy. We, as a matter of fact, we still get Christmas cards from him. Whatever. That's a total different deal than somebody that says, yeah, they sold us our place a couple years ago, but I really haven't talked to them since then. You know, that's a total different situation. You know, so, um, you know, you just, you've got to play to every situation a little bit differently um, and balance it. Um, I don't ever want somebody to feel like I've gone in there and stolen a client from them. You know, I want to be able, however that conversation went, that if that agent calls me because I've had them do it, mm -hmm. and they'll be like, well, I sold their house two years ago. I mean, now you're showing them properties and everything. I say, I asked them if they were working actively with anyone, and they told me you had sold the house two years ago. And then I asked them if they were going to be working with you, and they said they, they, they didn't, you know, it did, really didn't matter to them. So, you know, I just, I'm just up front. I want to be able to tell exactly what happened with integrity and with a way that I can keep my shoulders pulled back and be confident that I did the right thing, right? Um, so, I mean, whatever it is, however that looks to you. Some people it's different, you know, than other people. Um, but whatever it is for you, you've got to figure out where is that line that, you know, that you want to make sure that when people, I, I'll personally, I'll, I'm, I'm, as, I'm more worried about the agents that I have to work with every day and that integrity that it's taken me 20 something years to build with the other agents, I'm more worried about that than I am one transaction, personally. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will tell you personally, and listen, you've gotta make that decision for you. For me personally, I've given in times that I probably didn't need to. I've given stuff to people that I probably, sh in reality, most people wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. That's just me, because I personally believe with all my heart that if I do the right thing, it may not show up in the short run, but over time, there's more value. It, it circles back around. You know, I mean, whatever, whatever you call it, you know, whatever you, you call it karma, you can call it whatever you want. I truly believe that if you do the right thing, things will come back to you in spades. Um, so, what's that? No, it's not just in real estate. It's just life. You know, I mean, so. Um, so that's something. Yeah. So it really does come down. If somebody says, "I have a friend or relative in the business." Typically, I want to know what that relationship is. You know, is that you know, and, and is this someone that you trust with the, one of the biggest transactions you're ever going to do to negotiate and handle it correctly? Um, next one is, is I have to list my house. I want to list my house for a higher price. I'll get that after you give them the number. You know, um, and um, and listen, different markets deserve different things. I mean, if it's just out of the range, I got a I got an email last night um, from somebody. Again, it was a referral. It's not like I actively went out there and they asked me to go see a friend of theirs that had a place here in Old Seagrove. And I went down and I sat down with the folks and I went over the value and showed them the value and the value was crystal clear what it was, you know? And they said, I want to list it for 20% more than that. 
And first off, you got again, you got to be willing to walk away. And the comment that I typically say to people is, I would rather disappoint you now than in six months you wonder why I wouldn't tell you the truth based on the numbers. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, I typically tell people, because listen, if they're just going to list based on price, mm -hmm. first off, it's not a very good client usually. Um, secondly, you know, we're in a market where the market is moving in the upper direction, but it's not going to move 20% in nine months. Yeah. I mean, if it does, the rest of the market is going to, you know, start getting prepared because, you know, that's that book. We have to have a boom. You have to have a boom like that before you have a bust. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, if we start seeing those things, that's when we're really going to have our head on a swivel, right? Yeah. So knowing that our market has been steady, knowing that that is did. What I will typically say to someone after they say, well, we want to list it for that, is I'll say, I completely understand that you want to maximize the sales price for this place. My job is to give you the information in a professional way that you can make the best decision for you. Mm -hmm. At that price, um, listen, I, there's times, I say this a lot right now, there's times after being through three different market cycles when the prices that things will sell for will surprise us to the upside and sometimes in different cycles, it'll, it'll surprise us for what people are only willing to pay for something. Right now, if we're getting surprised, it's to the upside. So I don't want to tell you it can't sell for that. Based on these numbers, I think it's pretty clear that it, it's probably not going to happen. Mm -hmm. right. But I don't want to say never for anything. So in this case, what I would say is, is that we're talking about 20% difference. What I would say is, is I would be willing to list it at this, whatever that is for you. Understanding that, you know, depending on where you are, between 7 and 4% below ask price is what things are selling for. Mm -hmm. What I will do is, is I'll be willing to list it for this under with the understanding that the program that we're going to be doing, the market is going to tell us very quickly when we do, and I call it, and we're going to get to this in a couple weeks, I call it our listing launch formula. And basically what it is, is it's a formula which I'll give you guys in a, in a couple weeks where it's just showing exactly what we're going to do in the first three weeks. And I say at the end of these three weeks, the market and the feedback we have is going to tell us whether we're overpriced. Are you willing, if the market tells us that three weeks from now, to reduce the price more in line with what the comparables say? And if they say no, y'all, you're wasting your money. You're wasting your time, and in reality, you now have an opportunity to set the table for six months from now when it doesn't, when it didn't sell, because they're going to remember somebody okay. that told them the truth six mm -hmm. months ago. Okay, mm -hmm. so when I get to that place and they say, "No, we wouldn't," I would. I, I'm, this is my price, and I will just say, "I completely respect that." At this time, I don't know that I can give you what you need. I, I just, you know, and and you don't want to hire somebody that doesn't believe that they can do for you what you're asking them to do. Right. So my suggestion would be is that I'll promise you, you're going to be able to find plenty of agents that are going to be yes agents for you. Mm -hmm. You're going to have plenty of people that will tell you they can do that. <clears throat> the numbers show us it's going to be very difficult. And if they do, that's great. I would love for that to happen. My suggestion is if that's your price, that you go find someone else that's willing to list it for that price. And listen, please, let me be at the top of the list that if it doesn't sell and the listing agreement goes out in six months, that you give me a call and give me another opportunity to come in and give you a new evaluation on where the market market might be now. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so I, I will I will tell you this. I have sold more listings nine months down the road that I turned down than <clears throat> listings I've taken overpriced that never sold. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I will promise you if you're willing to walk away, if you're willing to be have the integrity to say no to people, you know, mm -hmm. and, and tell them that, you know, that's just, you know, in a way that they appreciate this professional. If you'll do that, your business, you're going to start filling a pipeline. And what's going to happen is, I promise you, if, the, if an agent's willing to go in there and list something for 20% over, first off, they can't perform. Secondly, they're going to disappoint them in other ways through that six months. They're going to come to you six months later, in most cases, completely frustrated. And they're going to come to you and they're going to be ready. And they, I, I call it tenderizing. The market and agents typically will tenderize sellers. If somebody over, overprices it, first off, about three weeks in, they're going to get tired of making those calls and saying, I'm sorry, I really don't have anything to say. We haven't shown it again this week. And, and so make sure that you're willing to do that. One of the things that I will do when somebody's pretty close, but they're within like ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 of where I think they should be listed, I'm talking about on higher prices, within a few percent, let's just say. Mm -hmm. What I will do is I will tell people, my personal opinion is, 
that maybe we start here because the market has been surprising to the upside, but understand that a call you're going to receive from me based on the feedback we've gotten with the number of showings we've had or the lack of showings, because listen, sometimes the market can say nothing and it's screaming at us that the price is the problem. Mm -hmm. So in three weeks, you're going to get a call from me and I'm willing to do this in this price range, but three weeks from now, are you willing if the market tells us to reevaluate and reduce this price? Mm -hmm. And most will say, yeah, I mean, if the market's telling us that, you know, and so from that standpoint, I try to give them that. When, when they're at a voice and they're like, well, should we list it for this or should we list it for that? And I can clearly see the numbers. Mm -hmm. I'll give them examples, you know, like, I, you know, right now, I mean, I listed a place, you know, this was a couple, three months ago from somebody who was a past client. You know, his question to me was, should we list it at a million twenty-five or a million fifty? The comp showed that it was going to sell somewhere between nine seventy-five and a million ten. Mm -hmm. And I said, my personal opinion is, there's never been a time when buyers are understand value more than they do today. They're going to get instant instant feedback. Sure. They're going to know when your place comes on the market. So, with that in mind, me personally, I would rather if our price is somewhere between a million and a million ten. I would rather us price it closer to where we're willing to accept, mm -hmm. and I'd rather us be turning <laughs> offers down or negotiating than not than pricing it higher and hoping somebody comes <clears throat> and that we have somebody to negotiate with. Right. And usually that that works. And I'll tell them examples. You know, that's a perfect example. I'll tell them that. I'll say, listen, I had a friend, you know, client of mine, past client of mine. We had uh, we listed their place for a million twenty-five. The discussion we had was should we list it for a million fifty or a million twenty-five? The comparable showed it was going to be nine seventy-five to a million. Mm -hmm. We priced it at a lower price. We got multiple offers. Yeah. So we got into a place where people had a sense of loss and we sold it for a full price in three days. Ultimately, my job is to sell it for the highest price in the quickest time. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do that is for us to price it at the where the market's telling us to price it. Mm -hmm. It would be, I've even told people now, I'll tell people, I'll say, I don't believe you can hardly underprice anything right now because the market knows value. If I were to go into water, I'm going to use watercolor as an example. If I were to go into watercolor right now and the comparable showed that house was worth a million and we priced it at 925, I will promise you we will have multiple offers by the end of the day in excess of that ask price, okay. up to where the value is, mm -hmm. especially once we start getting multiple offers and we get a feeding frenzy. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to underprice a place in today's market. Mm -hmm. That's not my goal, but mm -hmm. the market's going to respond very quickly if we price it correctly. Does that make sense? So the last one is this. This is the typical question we'll get is, is I only want to do a three month listing or I only want to have a short term, right? Yeah. Ever get that one? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so um, I'm probably going to give you something unique on this and something that I've always done is I tell people a couple things. The first thing that I say is, is, hey, I completely understand that you don't want to be tied down. Is that basically what you're telling me? You don't want to be tied down to one agent. Yeah. And so what I do is I say, I'm going to go even further than that. I'm going to give you the ability to cancel our listing agreement at any time for any reason if you want to. And I say I've done this for 20 years. I've had one cancellation. To be perfectly frank, I was so thankful they wanted to cancel it because they'd driven me crazy. <laughs> and so when I did that, typically it solves it. Yeah. And I tell them, I say, but listen, we need to have a six-month time period because if we okay. don't, you know, you're going to be in here. We're, the average days on market is 140 days, mm -hmm. and you're asking me to do this for 120. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to do my best to outperform the market. Mm -hmm. don't, don't get me wrong, I'm going to do everything I can to sell your house as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't make sense for me to do that. I will just say this, if you want to cancel at any time, that's fine with me. All I ask is that if you cancel within those 90 days, mm -hmm. that you reimburse me for the expenses I have and here's what they, and I'll give you a list of what they are within one week of starting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show them the Facebook ads. I'm going to show them what I'm spending on photographs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show them, you know, what I'm paying for a sign. I'm going to do all of it in there. You know what I mean? And, and I'm, I, I'm, to be perfectly frank, that typically solves that problem. Um, I tell people, I'm, going to, I'm not wanting your listing for six months. What I want is I want your listing for today. Because in my opinion, I need to earn your business every day. And if you're not pleased... I don't want to hold you to something that you're not happy about because in reality, if I try to hold you to something you're not happy with, you're going to go out and tell everybody else that. But if I perform and I give you the ability that you're in control in this situation, that if you're not pleased, that you can cancel at any time, I think it's a win-win for both of us. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, there are certain people, and then you just write it in your list agreement. So, you know, Seller can cancel at any time. 
without with in, for any reason, if canceled within whatever time frame you put, by, um, you know, agent will be reimbursed whatever you put thousand dollars for marketing fees, photographs, etc. Whatever you put, okay. You've taken the risk and taken that off the table. Does that does that make sense? Mm -hmm. How else have y'all answered that? Because listen, I've done that my whole career, and I've never had an issue. And I've had one, like I say, in, I've had one person in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of listings sold that has canceled on me. Yeah. And in reality, we were oil and water to begin with. I probably shouldn't have taken that listing to begin with. You know, yeah. we just thought differently. It didn't matter what I did. It didn't matter what I said. They they. They felt like they were smarter than me, and they'd sold three houses, and I'd sold hundreds, you know? And so in reality, it was a time when they called me, it was almost like I felt a relief that they had canceled that, that listing agreement. Mm -hmm. But it gives them the ability to feel like they are in control, and they should be, y'all. I mean, listen, yeah. you know, you know, it's, it's not that the customer is always right. You've got to be willing to walk away. Yeah. But for us to try to hold people over a fire and try to say, well, gosh, you signed this. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, and when they're not pleased, yeah. it's not going to help you long term. It's only going to hurt you. Right. Have any of y'all run into that? Have y'all done anything? Because this is something you're going to run into in, in this market environment. They're, they just, if they don't know you, they don't want to, they, they're worried that they're going to sign something that they're going to be held to. Um, and typically, I lead with this because I want to do it for everybody. I let them know up front. I say, listen, I want to take all the risk off the table. Because a lot of times, and this is the way I will typically say it, I want to take all the risk off the table. You know, we haven't known each other that long. Yeah. Um, and so I understand that you're not sure whether I'm the right person or not. Mm -hmm. um, if I didn't believe I was, I wouldn't be sitting here. But what I'm willing to do, because I believe in my abilities so much, is that I'm willing to do, it'll be a six-month time frame because we need that for the MLS. Mm -hmm. But you will have the ability, I'm going to write in there, that you have the ability to cancel for any reason any day that you want to. Does that make sense to take some of that risk off of you and take some of that worry off of you? And they say, wow, you know, you almost, sometimes you'll see them where they're tense and they just, it, they just let the guard down immediately. Yeah. They're like, well, he's, you know, this, so I really don't have any risk here. If, I mean, if he doesn't, what, doesn't do what he says, I can cancel this in a week. Yeah. So, you know, that's a way to kind of handle that and just, I'm, I'm just telling you, you will get way more listings by saying that than listings you will lose as far as dollars amount. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you get one listing, extra listing for that, which you will, if you get one extra listing for that, I promise you over time, that one listing can handle any of the cancellations that you might get later on. And it's going to put goodwill out there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, those are some of the things that we typically do. What I would encourage you to do, like I mentioned, is these questions you're going to get asked. These are things that we're all going to hear, we're all going to um, have. Especially if you're doing this business, those five things we just went over, you're going to get those questions. And the more times you're getting asked that question, you can answer it. The more you're going to be of value in the marketplace, the more you're going to be of value and your business is going to grow. And, and ultimately, the more that that's going to continue to help your momentum grow. So um, if y'all got any questions, just let me know. And then if not, what we'll do is, is just I would just encourage you, call me if you want to practice some of this stuff or you want to try some things that are in your voice. And I'll be glad to help on that. Okay?